everybody, sports card fans. It's John, Wade Boggs fan. Hope you're all doing well. I am back from the National as I'm recording this. It is Sunday night. My wife and I left Atlantic City uh, early Sunday morning, so I was not able to attend any of the show on Sunday. But I thought I would do a... I did four daily recap videos of my days there at the show, and I thought I would do one final sort of wrap-up uh, video and give my thoughts on the national, the venue, you name it, and then also show off all my pickups in one summary video. Again, my little recap videos I, show, I showed off basically what I picked up for that day. So this is just a way of putting a nice little bow on everything. So some of the, start off with some of the negatives and some of these I experienced, some of them I saw on various comments of other videos, recap videos or videos on the national. First one was Wi-Fi, that the internet, whether it be cell service or Wi-Fi was terrible. And I have to say, Wednesday afternoon when I was there and maybe half of Thursday, it was horrendous. Could not pull anything up on my phone. That hurt people trying to look up comps, recent sale prices. I even had an experience when I was at a table. Someone I believe was trying to pay them, uh, think through PayPal, something like that. And it was just kept spinning. It would not go through. I'm not sure, I forget how they exactly resolved the issue. They were able to resolve it to the satisfaction of both parties, but it was an ordeal. Now, I think it was sometime Thursday, I found that there was a AC always on free Wi-Fi connection that seemed to work fairly well. So I was able on occasion to look up comps, but sometimes I had to, to wait and so on. So that was, I think, one big negative that they need to step up either sell service inside the building, I don't know how they could do that, or offer or expand free Wi-Fi. I think there was another option. Someone said that they would make you pay $80 probably every time you'd want to connect, like every single day. I don't know how that worked. But that's a lot. To I mean, that's, that's pretty good card money to spend just so you would have Wi-Fi service. So that's one big uh, negative for me. The size of the venue... Actually, I thought the size was really good. Uh, someone told me that it was maybe close to 500,000 square feet. I think the actual size was a little bit larger than Chicago. Although, and I'm not an expert here. Atlantic City was my first national, and I've only been to three other nationals, and they've all been in Chicago. So I can't say that I'm an expert on here, but it seems to me that Chicago does a much better job utilizing the space that they have than Atlantic City did. I think there were too many gaps, open areas like on the sides and maybe both ends, although I have something to say about the autograph area. Um, but I don't know. I think they could have spread things out maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure if there were more tables. I don't know those exact numbers, but it seemed that the specific aisle, the numbered aisles that you would go down, seemed a bit crowded, uh, especially Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'll get to that uh, as well in terms of the crowds. Getting to the autograph uh, section, um, I was only there for Saturday morning to get an autograph and to meet Wade Boggs. So I don't know how it was the other days. Now, Wade Boggs was the first signer, 1045, and there, there were others that were following, I think around 11, 1115, and so on. There was Ricky Henderson, who was very popular. Um, there was Gary Payton. And I think there were a couple others as we were waiting. The crowds there were, everyone seemed to be just massing in a general area. It, it was very disorganized. And just people were just bumping up. And when someone announced something, you know, you would see people trying to move through these crowds just to try to get into the next line. Now, they did have announcers there. They seemed to be ushering in sort of 10 ticket numbers at a time. 
uh, to try to keep things moving, but it just seemed a bit chaotic. And while I was waiting for Wade Boggs, there was this one guy, I don't know what the situation was, but he started screaming and yelling at someone from the TriStar group that was trying to herd all these, all the crowded people and all that stuff. And he was going off on him, something that he was promised this or you're not doing your job or something. He was really upset. Um, everyone sort of stopped and turned and and uh, was in a little bit disbelief. Um, so I don't know what the beef was. I don't know if this guy had a legitimate uh, concern or whether he was just generally frustrated. I don't know. So I think they could have done a better job in at least sectioning off groups per player rather than just having people just in mass just head toward that end of the venue. So that's, again, I only got one autograph, so I don't know how it was the other days. But some of these schedules, I think on Saturday, there again, Wade Boggs was at 1045, and I think there were a slew of others at like 11 and 11 to 15. As soon as I had Boggs's autograph and all that stuff, I met with, up with someone else, and then I headed away. So it may have been even worse later on when all these different players were sort of signing at the same time. All right. Um, prices. I saw a lot of comments that you know dealers aren't budging, willing to negotiate on prices. I experienced that somewhat myself. Uh, there were some dealers where I tried to negotiate, and you know what? Whether it was off fifty dollars or ten dollars, I had a price in mind that I was willing to pay for a card. And a thing that you need to do, especially at the nationals, be willing to walk away. You may not be happy that you're not getting the card and the dealer's willing to work with you, but by walking away from a couple other cards, I managed to get some other really, really nice cards that the dealer was willing to work with me enough that I was happy with the price that I paid. Now, if you watched Mike Baseball Collector's video, I think his day zero recap video, he went to a dealer and tried to negotiate on a price and was basically told to in a little bit nicer terms, F off and go to another table if you're looking for deals because of the amount of money that he spent on getting to the show, setting up all that cost. He wasn't doing any deals. It was take it or leave it, uh, sticker price, so to speak. Maybe not solid, but definitely he and Mike were not even close. And so Mike walked away. I, I'd never heard of a dealer being that rude or not even flat out willing to, to work with you. Now, there's another dealer there as well. Based on my experience in Chicago, I don't want to name the dealer's name. There's no point in doing that. But I knew to avoid his uh, booth because he, at least in my personal experience, this is just my personal experience, he was not really willing to budge much on his asking price. So I, I may have just skimmed what he had for inventory. I didn't even look at anything or make an offer. But on the flip side... Again, I was able to make some pretty decent deals. I don't think they were major deals. I think for the most part, the deal that I got was at comp. So they were up here above comp, and I got them down right around comp. I think there's one maybe that I paid a little bit less than the general going rate, and that was because I did a package deal. So I got two cards from this dealer, and however you want to work it out mathematically in your head, um, I say that I got something slightly under uh, comps and there may be a couple other cards that as I, I look them up may have paid slightly over. But again, for me, I'm happy with the card and I'm happy with what I paid for it. Again, I'm a collector, so I'm not looking to flip these or make a return on my investment. These are staying in my collection. So whether the price goes up or down, they're in my collection, and I'm going to enjoy them. All right, grades. Some tables, I got the feeling, and I think this isn't unique to Atlantic City. I think this was in Chicago as well, and maybe some of the other regional shows. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't attended them. But it seemed that a lot of these display cases had really high-end cards, 7, 8s, 9s, 
and we're asking a fortune for them, and maybe they were justified prices. I, I don't know, but I skimmed right over them. For my vintage collection, I'm in the, you know, fours, fives, rarely a six, depending on what the card is and how, probably maybe a card from the 70s type of thing. But I'm in that mid grade range. I saw some nice cars. I was hoping to add to my Kolya Strumsky run. I needed the 61, 62, 63, 64, and 65, and 69. I saw all of those cards, but they were either in 7s or 8s or 9s. I don't need to pay that much. I don't need to pay $200 or so for a 7. Now this one, I almost got a 69 tops in a 7. We just couldn't, I was there with a Mike Baseball collector, we just couldn't get the dealer down low enough. He was, he started off not too bad with his initial asking price, but he wouldn't j drop it down just enough for me to be comfortable with it. So again, I walked away. But that was the, all the other sevens were at least $200 or more. I think he was originally asking 135. So again, he was closer, but we still couldn't make a deal. But all the other ones, I saw plenty of 61s, 60, a few 62s, couple 63s, a couple 64s. Just the grade was, I did again, I, I'm not looking for a car, a high-end Corey Strumsky run. I want a Corey Strumsky run. So I'm willing to look at, depending on the, the year, maybe like a 61, a 5. I'm fine with that. Maybe for a 65, maybe in a 5 or 6 still. So that disappointed me a little bit that it was more of a showcase that they were just showing off their amazing inventory. I don't know how much they sold. All right, uh, the last thing is the location of the hotels and parking. I think parking was a big, big issue for a lot of people. Either the cost, the lack of parking right near the convention center. I heard some people had to park like several blocks away. In my situation, now, for this particular hotel I stayed at, it was a really nice hotel. It suited my wife's needs in terms of what she was looking for, so I had to keep that in mind. But my hotel, now other than the, I think it was the Sheridan, which was right next to the convention center. Other than that, you're probably looking at at least at a minimum quarter of a mile, maybe half a mile. I know a lot of people stayed in some Airbnbs that were a mile plus out, so I think some of them took... You know, an Uber every day in and out, that's an extra cost that you have to factor in. Now, my hotel, again, it was a nice hotel close to the boardwalk, so it met my and my wife's personal needs, but I slept it over a mile from the hotel to the convention center and back. And on Thursday, with the after party being back at the Sheridan, I went again and back. So I'm just on the other side of 50. And between, I got there Tuesday afternoon and again left Sunday morning. Between that time, my little Apple Watch here, I tracked how many miles and steps that I took. I didn't add up all the steps, but I easily walked, and this includes some time on the boardwalk, 30 miles back and forth from my hotel to the convention center because I wasn't going to pay a taxi or an Uber. It did include some time on the boardwalk as well in the evenings, but some of the other events, and of course, walking around the huge venue. So my legs and feet are killing me. I can just imagine if I was there, and in fact, I have, I left around one o'clock on Saturday, so I wasn't even there for the full day Saturday or Sunday. If I had stayed for the whole thing, I'd probably be in a wheelchair right now, but it it takes a lot out of you, and I think with Atlantic City, it added to that. In Chicago, no matter where you stay, you have that huge parking garage with a walkway right to it. You're you're walking maybe a few hundred feet through the little um, pathways and stuff, and then into the convention center. It's really easy, convenient. I think maybe the parking cost was about the same, but so much convenient, and there were a lot more hotels that were closer like right on top of the convention center so i have to give my nod to chicago and negative marks on atlantic city for that all right some positive news it's not all, all negative here i did get some good deals i got some really nice cards 
that was my goal. I mean, and and even some of the cards that I didn't buy that were really high grades, it was cool to see all those amazing high-end examples of cards. They just weren't in my budget. I mean, it wasn't even close. So it was nice to see them. But I ended up getting some really nice cards. I was very happy with that. So that's a plus in my book. I met a ton of YouTubers. There were two after parties, Thursday night, Friday night. Had a blast. So happy. This, this YouTube community here and the things that we do outside of just buying cards is amazing. I can't stress it enough. I know of you, some of you, again, reading some comments on other videos, had some negative views and aspects of, hey, if you're just going there for the experience, that's fine, blah, 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 and stuff. Yeah, I think there are a lot of us in this little YouTube community, and maybe some of those weren't, you know, maybe they don't create videos, maybe they just follow other videos, which is uh, content creators, which is fine. But I think the fact that all of us are slowly developing, maybe faster than others, these relationships that, that extend beyond being on the convention floor and looking at baseball cards. It, it's gone much more beyond that, and that was my number one priority. If I didn't get the cards that I got, got a couple other ones, maybe didn't even spend my money, I still would have had a nice time. Again, I was also there with my wife. We had a nice time walking the boardwalk. I lost a little money at the casino, and yeah, not, not too bad. I was, was expecting to, but that's no problem. Overall, that experience was top-notch. And the last thing, I got to see Wade Boggs. He was not able to attend last year's national at Chicago, so I missed out on that. And I think I said in my recap video on Saturday that this was the sixth time I met Wade. Looking up some information, I think it may have been the seventh, but regardless, I got to see Wade, another photo op. He was very gracious in signing some extra things for me on the side. Really appreciate that. And that was a blast. So got okay deals, nothing huge. Got some great cards, hung out with some great fellow YouTubers, great guys, and saw Wade Boggs. So that's sort of my summary there. If I had to rank it on a scale of 1 to 10, maybe definitely because of the YouTube experience and the fact that I did get some really nice cards, probably a 7 out of 10. In the past, I would probably have ranked Chicago 8 or 9 out of 10. But that's my opinion. Would love to know what your thoughts were on the National in the comments, especially Sunday. Um, oh, one other thing I talked about was, was the crowds. Another thing that I thought was interesting is Wednesday afternoon seemed really packed. Thursday seemed really busy. Friday seemed really busy as well. Now, again, I left around 1 o'clock on Saturday. But when I left, the crowd just didn't seem to be there like it was in previous days. I'd be interested to know maybe how Saturday afternoon was. Maybe things picked up in the afternoon. And of course, I would like to know if any of you attended on Sunday, what the crowds were like there. But it was very interesting. I would have thought that at least on Saturday, maybe not Sunday, that a lot of people would have, you know, maybe they couldn't take some time off during the week and would have headed in on Saturday. Location, parking may have been an issue for them not wanting to take the trip in maybe for the day. So that may have affected it as well. All right, enough of that. Uh, again, would love to know your comments on any aspect of the National, whether it be cards, the venue, Wi-Fi, you, you name it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera around. Sorry for rambling here, but I just wanted to get my full thoughts on, on the national pros and cons. I'm going to turn the camera around and show off some of the stuff that I got from fellow YouTubers and others that followed my channel that just randomly, random acts of kindness uh, that gave me, and then the cards that I picked up at the national. So let's go take a look. All right, I'm going to start off with some of the random acts of kindness that I received during the National. Uh, the first one, or the first few here, some of us uh, YouTubers, maybe not every single year, but uh, on occasion will go to the Topps website or maybe some other website and have a baseball card made of us and our channel and hand them out as we see fellow YouTubers. 
I did one last year in the theme of 1973 tops. This year I did 1972 tops. So this was uh, my card here. And that was the back. So a lot, a lot of these uh, sign it and so on. I, I did 60. I have maybe six left or something that I wasn't able to uh, to hand out. Uh, but that was, again, this is just fun to, to, to hand out to fellow YouTubers. Speaking of fellow YouTubers, Scott Reindeer Studios is an amazing artist. He actually had four different cards that were based on his drawings, and he handed the, them out, and I got uh, all four copies. And this first one here, just a gorgeous drawing of Jackie Robinson. I believe this is the one that he did during Hobby Palooza. I think he had to finish it after his you know session on Hobby Palooza. But that is just a great image. And he tells about it here. Uh, so it's acrylic on wood painted in 2022 for Bench Clears Hobby Palooza. Right, and I guess you can scan that. I haven't tried it yet. You can scan that code there, and I don't know. I'll, I'll just pause it here if you want to. I don't know if you're able to scan it. How maybe take a screenshot and scan for the video showing him draw that. So that's one. Here's a black and white of Hank Aaron. Really cool. And again, this one was done for I think some of these is ink wash painted in 2021. And I'll pause it there if you want to take a screenshot and check out that video and Larry Doby I think one of these was a commission piece here but let's see acrylic on canvas painted in 2021 yes for Nina S Nina S uh, commissioned Scott to do this I will again if you want to pause the video there hopefully that'll show up all right and the last one was a commission piece of Beau Bichette Let's see if I can get that little focus a little bit better. There we go. Look at that detail. That's great. And this was done for Scotty Aranya Boys in 2021. Again, there's the QR code or whatever they call it uh, to see if you want to check out the video of him drawing it. All right. Uh, next one, Jake, formerly Ticket Leprechaun, now Legends Never Die. Uh, he had a cool 1956 Tops card made of him and that's him uh, playing softball there he signed it and what's actually cool is he is in a softball league I believe and these are his stats uh, for several years of playing I don't know if I can uh, zoom that in a little bit here but uh, not too bad Jake not too bad all right so that was pretty cool and another one here Victor the rookie card specialist Let's see if I can get that focus here come on Oh my goodness, there we go. Victor, the rookie card specialist. Really cool card there, Victor. Thank you. And he signed it on the back. And another uh, YouTuber here uh, that I think I met for the first time, Eddie's Cardboard Chaos. Uh, big supporter of my channel, Eddie. Thank you uh, very much. He gave uh, these cards away, signed it there. And there is the back. So these are really cool. Again, this is this is part of the YouTube community that makes these nationals so great. In other words, right here, we don't we don't count subscribers, we count friends. Well said. And the last one here is a. He's been making videos, I believe, for a year now. Um, hasn't made a whole lot of content, but attended the YouTube get together. Now I was talking with him on the. Friday night. I don't know if he was there on Thursday. If I did, I may have met him or uh, missed out on him. Um, Iconic Al. Actually, no, I did. He was there on Thursday. He gave this to me on Thursday, I believe. Uh, but Iconic Al and his YouTube channel is Iconic Baseball. And he loves uh, talking about it. He does some modern stuff, but mainly uh, some vintage and there he is here. I'll again. I'll do the QR code, but I'll also put a link to his channel. I think he only has maybe 55 subs. So go check out his channel. Uh, see if we can maybe uh, increase uh, the subscriber count for Al's channel. And you can you can see there he he signed that. Really nice. It was nice chatting with you, Al. And Mark Rudog 21. He saw me at the show. I think maybe on Wednesday and said, Hey. Glad I bumped into you. I got something for you. And these Gypsy Oak cards. 
In fact, I, Mark, I apologize. When you put him in a package here, I thought it was just this one card. And it wasn't until later on when I opened up uh, the sleeve and stuff that I saw that it was actually two cards. So, Mark, thank you very much. Uh, I love these uh, designs here, these Gypsy Oaks. This is um, the design of his minor league card, TCMA minor league card. So, really cool. Thank you, Mark. And this one, and I apologize, I I forget the name of the new YouTube channel, but I was in line waiting for uh, getting an autograph from Wade Boggs. So, of course, I was wearing a Wade Boggs t-shirt, and he came up to me. I know he's, he's a Red Sox collector. had a whole bunch of Red Sox, uh, like a hat and, and shirt on and stuff like that, and I do apologize. Uh, I forget exactly who it was, but he came up to me and said, hey, you Wade Boggs fan? I said, yes. And he had this Wade Boggs card for me which was extremely extremely nice thank you so much but not only this he says i know you collect short print image variations of hall of famers and he just had a small little stack of cards and said are there any cards in here that you don't have so i went through them and there was one and he says hey you can have that as well so again i truly appreciate it and please it comment on this video if you're if you're watching this i do apologize again just met so many different people and i'm sometimes terrible with names but he gave me this randy johnson short print really really nice thank you so much and then finally i met up with a fellow wade boggs super collector i had a couple cards that were duplicates i don't normally trade but uh, uh for this he's a good he's a friend of mine again fellow Wade Bog Super Collector. So he had, I had three duplicates of cards. He's trying to complete a 1999 Topps Tech Gold, and there's 60 versions, and they're only out of 10. And he's really close to completing it. And I had one that he needed. I don't have that many of them, so I said, hey, we'll do a like exchange. And so the two other cards were manufactured patch cards spelling out chicken man he also is trying to complete that i've completed it but i had a couple uh, two other duplicates so for those three cards he actually gave me three top tech golds that he had duplicates of that i did not have now in my recap video so this one here they all have if you're not familiar with 99 tops tech they all have different uh, patterns in the background and this one here is here number 10 out of 10 this one here I pointed out that is an error because if you can see here it says six time AL batting champ. No, he did not win six batting titles. Now he was close, I think, in qualifying in 1982, but he just didn't have enough at bats to qualify, or else I think he would have won the batting title in 82. But no, tops. He only won five batting titles. Now another one that I thought was an error in RJ Collect sets. Kudos to you for mentioning this in the comment of the video. And in fact, I think I had figured it out uh, some time ago, but I had forgot about it. This one here, if you look, it says career average 329. Well, Wade Boggs had a 328 career batting average. But RJ collects sets. RJ pointed out correctly that this is a 1999 card. And so it was his stats through 1998. He played a final year, wasn't a full season. In 1999 in which he hit his 3000th hit and at the time at the end of the 1998 season he had a 329 batting average so this is not an error it is actually correct as of the end of 1998 but his total career average was 328 and this one here is 10 out of 10 and I think this one here is 1 out of 10 yeah all right so two other Random acts of kindness. Now these are separated here because he's starting to get into graded cards here. Mike Hitman23, huge Don Mattingly fan. Uh, we've connected over YouTube and just so glad we had a chance to meet. First time he saw me, he says, Hey John, I got a card for you. Of course, being a Yankees fan, he got me this. He gave me this Wade Boggs 93 upper deck in a gem mint 10 in a Yankees uniform. I don't have uh, too many graded cards in my collection, and I think maybe only one other 10. So, Mike, thank you very much. Really appreciated. Love getting weight box cards. And another one was from Sean Tiford, the chosen roster, I believe. 
uh, sorry, Sean, if I if I butchered your uh, YouTube name there, but Sean, another very generous YouTuber collector friend, he saw me, and it was on Wednesday, and he said, hey, rather than wait until Thursday, he reached into his little suitcase that he was toting around and gave me an envelope, and this is what he gave me. It is either a an in-person or through the mail autograph. This not this isn't pack issued from uh, 1989 Donruss, but this is my first again either in-person or through the mail autograph card that has been authenticated by PSA DNA as an authentic Wade Boggs autograph. So again, very special addition to my collection. So thank you, Sean. All right, now finally on to my pickups. For the national, uh, I'm going to start uh, sort of not in any particular order. Uh, sort of maybe what I paid for the card, I guess. I don't. I went into it on the individual recap videos as to what I paid and the deals I got. I'm just going to show off the cards. So the first one here, this is for my 1970 Tops Hall of Fame run. Very in inexpensive pickup. So Hoyt Wilhelm in a PSA six. Um, did not cost me much at all, so this was a no-brainer. Um, good centering, which is what I look for. All right, there's that. Next one is my first Roberto Clemente graded card. It's his 1967 tops in a four and a half. Uh, just love the centering on that. Yeah, there's some issues on the corners. Doesn't bother me. That is a crisp image there of... Roberto Clemente, no major issues with the card at all. Um, nice back as well. Very happy with that pickup. So that's my first Roberto Clemente graded card in my collection. Next is one that I had in my collection years ago. It was one of the maybe dozen cards that I sold at one point in my life and regretted. And now I finally have it back in my collection. And it's the 1970 Tops Thurman Munson rookie card. Now this PSA five is I, I've showed it to everyone that was there, all the YouTube people, and other than maybe that corner there, maybe a little whiteness there. I mean, just the centering on that is so sharp. You know, slight little maybe ink you know blot there, but that typically doesn't reduce the grade. Just a stunner of a five. Got a you know decent deal. On it, considering the centering. Now, sometimes you have to pay a little premium for well centered cards in vintage. So, you have to keep that in mind. And was really happy to finally add this Thurman Munson rookie card. Another rookie card that I picked up is the Steve Carlton. Now, this is one sharp looking for, again, maybe that corner. Maybe that, I mean, it worked. the dealer had this four and a five, and I swear I couldn't tell the difference between the two. Here's the back, sharp, sharp looking back, nice and clean and crisp. Oh, I just love this card, and so I chose the cheaper one. Why not? I don't buy that number right there. I buy the card. And that is so well-centered and, and sharp for 65. So happy to add the Steve Carlton rookie to my collection another card that i had been looking for not super super heavy but leading up to the national say the last maybe three months i would keep looking ebay listings for this particular card i've always loved the card it's i would say probably his most liked or his favorite card even more than his rookie card, and it's the 1969 Johnny Bench. Again, in a PSA four, I do not mind. This is this is right in my wheelhouse. Fours that are well centered. I I'll take issues with the corners. That centering, and I had to pay a little bit because these 69s. If you've if you own a 69 Bench, other than maybe a seven or eight. Okay, or nine. Um, typically, you're going to have centering issues. It is so hard to find this card, especially left to right, well centered. It may not be perfect, but my goodness. Um, hopefully, I can. Yeah, there we go. It may not be perfect, but that is just 
gorgeous and i don't really see much else wrong with it there again there could be some minor flaws but the presentation to me looks amazing there is the back nice back as well so happy to get this second year johnny bench i still need his rookie and some others uh from the 70s so i'm still a ways away from my johnny bench run at least up to 1980 all right uh, we have four more to go here this next one Again, some of these I didn't plan on necessarily looking for. They just presented themselves, and I was drawn to them. And here's one. And this was one that I did a package deal on, so I picked this one up in another card to try to make a deal, make you know, sort of sweeten the pot by increasing what I paid and them being able to move one, one more than one card of their inventory. And it's 58 tops, Hank Aaron, white name. Now, there's the yellow name version, and I do have to say that I probably like the yellow name version better. So it's one I'm still going to look for to add to my collection. But at least I have a 58 tops Aaron in my collection now. Yeah, off top to bottom a little bit, but I don't want top to bottom. I can live with it's the left to right, and that is almost dead on left to right. Again, it's a PSA four, but look at the colors on that. I'm extremely happy with that pickup. Here's the back. Now, this probably led to it being a four. You have, I don't know if that is wax, gum stain, whatever. On an angle, it looks fairly thick uh, on the card. And also there, I don't mind the back. I don't buy cards for the back. I buy them for the front. And that is a great example. So happy to add this one to my collection. All right, the last one, the last big three, so to speak. Another card that, since I started getting into vintage collecting, was one definitely on my list. So they must have for vintage collectors, especially those from the 70s. And it is the 75 Tops George Brett. Now this, when I did the recap video from my hotel room, did the lighting did not do this justice at all. Look at that sharp bluish purple, the green, uh, the royals there. No little print marks, which is typical for 75 cards. A little off center left to right, but man, this is shows off great. And for the George Brett, I did want a seven. This is one of those cards, sort of like the 1980 Tops Ricky Henderson. I wanted that in an eight. Um, you may want to call it for quote unquote investment purposes. I don't like to use that word. Um, but there are certain cards and that were in my price range that you want to sort of try to get a certain grade for. And this is, this is one here, this George Brett, I've been looking at this for a while. This was one where if you technically want to call it with the package deal, I got um, maybe slightly under comps. That's, these, that's what I'm calling it. But so happy to get this nice back as well. Just a sharp looking Brett rookie. Oh, so happy to have that. Okay, last two. This one, again, was not on my list at all. Wasn't even on my radar until I saw this card at the in the display case. And it's it spoke to me. You know, if whether it's a modern card or a vintage card. I'm sure a lot of you out there have had experiences where you see a card and you just say, I have to have it. Just, it's a gorgeous card. And this is one for me. Again, I've, I've shown all, all these others off in the previous recap videos, but with the lighting, this 1950 Bowman Bob Feller and a five. Again, I was not looking to add this to my collection, but that registration is spot on. The centering may not be perfect, but that's so nice and the back i mean I'm, I'm assuming it's i i tried to look it over i couldn't see any creases or whatever it's probably corner issues maybe slightly centering of course but with some of these bowmans you could get little registration issues i looked this up close with the magnifying glass and i can't see any issues with the registration just gorgeous so this will go right next to my 50 bowman Yogi Berra, also, which is in a two, but both of them present very well. So extremely excited to have this in my collection. Again, wasn't expecting to add this to my collection. And the last one, another card. This was the 
big purchase, I guess you could say. And this is one I packaged with the George Brett rookie. So I was able to get a, a, a pretty good deal. I may have overpaid slightly for it. Um, I'm not sure if I, I, I'm sure there were other copies at the National, most likely higher graded copies and a much higher price tag. But when I saw this card, again, it spoke to me. It's, I hate to use the word iconic, but when you're talking about vintage baseball cards, especially from the 50s, every collector needs to have this card in their collection. It is the 53 Bowman Color Pee Wee Reese. And this is in a two. Now, when I, I asked to look at the card, and I was expecting to see, you know, a huge crease here, there, you know, you name it for a two. Now, granted, it's off-centered. I can live with this. I, I can definitely live with the off-centering on this particular card. The corners have a lot of issues, especially this one down here and a little bit over there as well. That one looks to be not too bad. And, of course, that one I think has a little bend into it. But other than that, now, I was with Mike Baseball Collector at the time, and I, I, you probably are not going to be able to pick it up, and I apologize for the glare. I'll just show, You can almost see it right there. There's from the, the shoe down to the bottom, there seems to be, you can make it out right there, a slight maybe bend in the card. It's not a full crease. It doesn't extend to the other side. And look at that, look at that back. I mean, just, I, I, I can't believe this is a two. Um, the other thing, though, that may take it away that I, that I spotted once I got home, and you may not be able to see it either. I don't know if I can zoom in um, or focus here. I apologize. Okay. Right, <laughs> again, it, right there, there is a, in, in the black border, there looks like a small indentation, like someone had a, like a ballpoint pen and just pressed ever so slightly um, onto it. Um, obviously, they wouldn't have done that. And you can see maybe some little smaller little indentations there as well. So surface probably got dinged. Uh, corners definitely centers, centering. You know, so there were all factors that brought the card down. But in terms of general eye appeal, the registration is just great. I, I don't see any. I mean, look at that. That is perfect. I don't know if that mark there is a print mark or whether that is on all copies. I didn't look at other copies there. But even if it is a print mark, I mean, heck. Uh, for this too, again, I may have paid a little bit more for it, but I have to have a have to have this card uh, in, in your collection. So there you have it. My pickups for the national, my pros, cons, all that stuff. Nice big bow wrap up. I know this video went. A long time but I want to get my thoughts off wanted to do even for posterity want to show off all the cards that I picked up and again the generosity of fellow youtubers um, just great amazing I can't say enough about you guys I loved hanging out with you talking baseball cards talking life in general other things various topics got to know everyone a little bit better hope to continue it next year in Chicago that's all I have for you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.